Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. Apparently, my concerns about these guys being bad parents was unfounded. They are absolutely amazing. They're doing a great job. This is their second batch of fry still, and they're really taking care of them. Uh, they're roughly a week and a half old now, I think. And as you can see, there's still uh, quite a large number of them in here. And I have yet to see them do anything but take care of them. I've never seen any of them being eaten or anything. Uh, and they also take care of the territory really well and they're doing an absolutely amazing job now if you remember I had taken uh, this group here out. this is from the same batch because their first batch uh, they ate all but a handful of them and those guys are in the fry nursery in the back now I am gonna take that one out and I'm gonna consolidate those fish in with these guys not because of any real necessity but because I really want to be able to show you guys the difference in size between them and I can't really as you can see here uh, have a look at it and see how they're doing because of all the infusoria in the tank so I'm gonna put them in there I'm gonna show you guys that'll be a little later on in the video and you get to see uh, them which are like a, a week and a half older and see how well they're growing so what prompted this video was a comment someone wanted to know how I cultured infusoria now I don't usually I don't do it the way most people do it so I, but I will go over what I do and if I have time in the video I'll also just go over what uh, generic uh, infusoria culturing is about and that is like something you can find on YouTube there's tons and tons of videos about it but I'm gonna go over what I do first off for feeding uh, you're gonna see some live food here in a second these are scuds I usually feed scuds to fish uh, when I'm trying to uh, fatten them up for breeding or in this case uh, keep them really nice and stimulated so that their uh, behavior is at its peak and of course gives them the most nutrition and as you can see they really love it this is absolutely amazing for them I find live food is uh, really good and it is not really essential I mean a lot of people don't feed live food at all but I find, I mean, I wouldn't want to eat the same food every day, so I think it's a good idea. Now, in general, my staple food for all my fish tanks is what I do is I buy uh, in bulk a fair number of different varieties of flake fish food, and I just mix them all together, and that is in a big bag, and I keep that as my uh, general food to feed to uh, the fish room. I mean... This is all wonderful and everything, but it's not really possible to uh, do this continuously. I mean, they need some sort of other food as well. So here you go. I have removed the back uh, fry nursery. And in a second here, you're, actually you can still see them. Those really large ones, uh, those are a week and a half older than the rest of the group. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a still here in a second and you'll get to see them. So, I mean, they're doing really well. I mean, that's, like I said, that's a week and a half difference between the batches. So at some point, relatively soon, I am going to need to consolidate all this. And that means most likely what I'll do is I'll take the parents out, put them in a separate aquarium, and then leave these guys in here uh, to grow out, because this is the tank they're hatched in, and it's the one that they're most comfortable with. So let's get down to how I feed my fry. Now, I start off, like, when the, the first free swimming, I feed them infusoria, and then I also feed them mixed in with that uh, vinegar eels. And I find that's a really good starter, and I will keep that up for uh, the better part of a week, and then I'll start mixing other things in. So the vinegar eels you've seen before, I culture uh, 10 at a time, and I do two, and I'll put them into the separator, and then I'll uh, refill with vinegar, and then put them in the back as well. Now, my infusoria is a little bit different than uh, most people. I have three 15-gallon aquariums that I culture it in. And because I have a microscope and uh, a little bit of experience with it, I use actual, uh, I go to ponds and I collect it that way. A lot of people don't do that, of course, and there is a bit of a danger for that as well. But I'll get to that in a second. And I've just started um, doing a little bit of brine shrimp. I will get to that as well. And I also have microworms. Microworms have been culturing for quite some time. So this is my initial blend. Uh, what I'll do is I'll separate out some of the vinegar eels, as you can see here. And this uh, actually works for a few days. And then, of course, I'll clean this out and uh, restart it again. So I'll pour about three quarters of this into a plastic container. And then I'll top that up with uh, uh, infusoria, like green water. 
and that is my initial fry starter. And I actually put an awful lot of green water in, as you'll see here in a second. Uh, but that's uh, that allows the fish to have a continual source of food, and I find that's really helpful for them growing. And I know um, vinegar eels aren't the best nutritional source, but I find if you feed a great variety of food sources, uh, that doesn't really matter at all. I mean, as long as they're getting a, a number of different things, I find that perfectly fine. So here's the green water, and uh, it has a great number of different varieties of things in it because I've checked it out with uh, the microscope and I made sure there aren't any uh, nasties in there. Uh, so what I'll do is this will get stirred up a little bit, and then that gets fed for the first week. That's all I get put in there. And then as they get a bit older, as they are now, I will mix in a fair amount of microworms, and then I'll just pour that whole uh, mixture uh, into each of the tanks. Now, if you want to culture your own infusoria and you don't have access to any of the outdoors, like I don't right now, uh, all you need to do is take uh, some uh, leaves of lettuce, that sort of stuff, put it into some water, and in a short period of time, you'll have tons of infusoria. And it is uh, the way most people do it, and there's tons of videos online for that. Again, I prefer to have a greater variety in the organisms I'm feeding, so I don't mind going to a little bit extra to uh, put in uh, some extra organisms, some uh, different free-swimming uh, uh, protozoas and that sort of stuff. And I find it, uh, it works really quite nicely. And once you have it going, of course, it's just a simple matter of keeping it going, which is not difficult at all. And that is my other 15-gallon tank, the one you saw me take the scuds out of. Uh, that is also infusor in there too, and I mix uh, both of them, all three of them, I should say, together uh, when I feed them that way. Now this is brine shrimp, and there are so many ways of hatching brine shrimp, I'm not going to really get into that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether I am going to go to anything more elaborate for my system. Uh, I find uh, this works really well, and I don't really uh, need as much, uh, but... If it gets to the point where I do, or if there's a lot of people who want to see it, uh, I will build a, a bigger mousetrap version of uh, brine shrimp hatchery, if, like I said, if that uh, becomes necessary. But all I do is the same thing everyone else does, which is uh, mix the salt and the water and the eggs and just bubble a lot of air in it. And then I find the nicest way of separating them out is to use crinoline. This is the sieve I had put together when I put the sink together. And I find this is ideal for this, as you'll see here shortly. This is a simple matter of pouring the water in. And you can see there's the brine shrimp. And then it's a simple matter of flipping that over. And then I'll just take tank water and uh, rinse that out and dump it in with the fish. And that is my feeding routine. At some point, uh, I'll let you know when, I'll get on to uh, feeding them ground up flake food as well. But that probably won't happen until I uh, remove the parents, because, uh, well, uh, ground up flake food, and they're not quite there yet, and by the time I think the parents need to come out, it'll probably be about right anyway, uh, so that's probably when that's going to happen. So that's all you need to do for that. It's nice and rinsed out now. All the shrimp are in there, and I just pour the water back in here, uh, hook it back up to the air, and that's all there is to it. And I do this, uh, well, every 48 hours, I'll start a new one. And I usually do it at night uh, before I go to bed, so I have some in the morning. And they're good for a day and a half easily, so. And that's it. That's all there is to that. And there you go, there's the shrimp. And that's my feeding routine. Nothing really elaborate, but I find it works. And uh, as we'll see as the fry grow up, uh, hopefully they will end up uh, getting all their little vitamins and minerals and everything they need and they'll grow quite nicely. So I have to figure out what tank I'm going to put the parents in because that's the next step. I have to get them out of here. And I thought I would show you some guppies feeding on these guys as well because uh, it's really hard to see in that tank with all the infusoria in there, which you will notice I keep feeding because... Uh, there's always a few stragglers that just don't seem to grow as fast as the others, and I want to give them all a reasonably good chance. So that's uh, my point for doing, like, keep feeding Infusoria as long as I think it's necessary. At some point in time, I will stop feeding that to them, uh, simply because, uh, you know, I have to move on. And having uh, this much Infusoria in all the time, 
uh, it's not really a benefit other than the fact that, you know, the little stragglers get it. So what I'll probably do is I'll stop feeding at some point and let the water clear up. And it'll ha it'll, again, will allow me to keep an eye on it better for uh, what I'm feeding the uh, older ones and the bigger ones, the ones I'll probably end up keeping anyway. Because unfortunately, the, the tiny little ones, uh, I may have room for some of them in some of my tanks. Uh, for, for the most part, they'll just end up being culls. So that is unfortunate, but with this many fry, I just simply can't raise them all. <laughs> it's just too many of them. And this is just a little group in the middle, and as you can see, they're doing really well, and they have nice big bellies. So if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. Let me know what you think below. And let me know also uh, what you do to feed your fry, and uh, that's, like I said, one of the reasons why I do this is just the interaction and talking and whatnot with you, and seeing uh, what everyone else does, and getting suggestions and all that sort of stuff. So these guys are doing amazing. Uh, the parents are doing really well. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do when they keep breeding because there's just so many of them. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.